This is William Michael of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, and in this video, what I'd like to do is provide students with some help working through Article 53 in Algebra 1. What we'll do is simply read through this lesson together. We'll talk through the points that we come across in this lesson, make sure everything is easy to understand, and then hopefully you'll be able to complete your lesson assessment and finish this lesson as quickly and easily as possible. I recommend that you watch this entire video because it will provide you with um, an hour or so of content and this can be counted towards your annual school studies in algebra. So let's study together Article 53 in Algebra 1. We can see that the subject of this lesson is addition in algebra. So on the assessment, if you're asked to state the subject of this lesson, the subject is addition in algebra. Article 53 reads as follows. Addition in algebra is the process of finding the simplest expression for the sum of two or more algebraic quantities. Addition in algebra is the process of finding the simplest expression for the sum of two or more algebraic quantities. So the first thing to notice here in Article 53 is that we're not talking about addition in arithmetic. In arithmetic, addition is simply the process of finding the sum of two or more numbers. Addition in arithmetic is the process of finding the sum of two or more numbers. We can see that addition in algebra is not the same thing. We're not trying to find the sum in algebra as we did in arithmetic. Notice what this article says. Addition in algebra is the process of finding, not the sum, but the simplest expression for the sum of two or more algebraic quantity. So make sure you see that there's a difference here. Addition in algebra is the process of finding the simplest expression, the simplest expression for the sum of two or more algebraic quantities. Algebraic quantities, not numbers as in arithmetic but the simplest expression for the sum of two or more algebraic quantities. I would recommend you memorize this definition by simply reciting it and reciting it until you can close your eyes or look away from the book and continue reciting it. Addition in algebra is the process of finding the simplest expression for the sum of two or more algebraic quantities. Addition in algebra is the process of finding the simplest expression for the sum of two or more algebraic quantities. Continue reciting that until you're able to recite it without looking at the book. It'll help you to keep it in mind and remember all of the details of this article. So that's a definition of addition in algebra. Now what we're going to do in this lesson is study a few different cases or a few different situations where we have to add in algebra, but each of these cases has is a little different, 
And so we've got to learn a general rule for all of the cases, but it's good for us to study one case at a time, starting with the simplest case, and then working up to more difficult cases. So let's start looking at case number one. And make sure you notice this. Make sure you notice that we're studying a first case of addition in algebra. And here in italics, we have the details of this case explained for us. What do we mean by case one in addition in algebra? We mean adding when the quantities are similar and have the same sign. So the quantities are similar and the quantities have the same sign. This is addition in the first case in algebra. So let's look at an example. We read that James has three pockets and each of his pockets contains apples. James has three pockets and each pocket contains apples. So there's three quantities and each of the quantities are similar. They're of the same kind. There are three quantities of apples. James has three pockets, each containing apples. In the first pocket, he has three apples. In the second pocket, he has four apples. And in the third pocket, he has five apples. So we want to find the sum of how many apples James has. And in a simple addition, as we would do in arithmetic, we can simply add the apples as we see here in the lesson. In one pocket, James has three apples. In another pocket, James has four apples. And in a third pocket, James has five apples. The units for each of these quantities is the same. The units is an apple. Three apples, four apples, five apples. And we want to know how many apples. So what we do is we can simply bring the unit apples down to the sum. And then we add this numeral coefficient, this factor that multiplies how many apples there are. And we simply add the number of apples. Three apples and four apples make seven apples, and five more apples make 12 apples. That seems pretty simple. It's just like arithmetic. Again, apples is the unit, and then we have a number of how many units. Three apples plus four apples makes seven apples, plus five more apples makes 12 apples. And there we have a sum. And this is given just as an example to help us think about addition. Now we're going to look at addition in algebra. So let's keep going here and look at the rest of this example. Now, instead of writing the word apples, suppose he should use the letter A. So let's use the letter A as a symbol that represents the unit. We could write it like this. James has three times this unit A in one pocket. James has four of the unit A in his second pocket. And James has five of the unit A in his third pocket. How many does he have in all? We simply bring the unit down, A, and then we find the sum of these numeral coefficients. 3 and 4 make 7, and 5 more make 12. So we have a total of 12 times A. That's how we should think of this. 3 times A plus 4 times A plus 5 times A makes a total of 12 times A. This is addition in algebra. And this is addition in case one, when the quantities are similar 
that means they have the same they have the same coefficient here the same literal factor the quantities are similar and they have the same sign here they are all positive so we have positive 3a positive 4a and positive 5a they are similar quantities with the same sign this is case number one in addition in algebra we then read in the book it is evident that means it is obvious that the sum of 3 times a 4 times a and 5 times a is 12 times a or 12 a and then it says whatever a may represent so this symbol a represents any unit any unit if we have three apples and four apples and five apples we'll have a total of 12 apples if a represents um, dollars we could say three dollars and four dollars and five dollars makes twelve dollars if a represents nickels we could say three nickels and four nickels and five nickels make twelve nickels no matter what this second quantity is it can be represented with the letter a because the sum will be the same the sum will be the same no matter what this other quantity is and that's why we can use a as a symbol of any second quantity down here in number two we take a look at a different example in the same manner just as we saw above in the first example, the sum of negative 3a, negative 4a, and negative 5a would be negative 12a. And here we see the example written out in a column. The first quantity is negative 3 times a. The second quantity is negative 4 times a. That makes a total of negative 7a, and negative 5a makes a sum of negative 12a. Notice they are similar quantities, they all have the same literal factor, and they have the same signs. They're all negative. This is another example of case 1 in addition in algebra and we see it's added and the sum is found in the same way. So we have two examples here. We have two examples of the first case in addition in algebra where the quantities are similar and they have the same sign. The first example shows us positive quantities and the second example shows us negative quantities. All right. So having seen those two examples and having an idea of how to find the sum, or remember the purpose of addition in algebra is not really to find the sum, but to find the simplest expression for the sum. Now that we've seen two examples of how to do that, we can come down further on the page and we find that there's a rule for us in this lesson. And notice here in the capital letters, it says to add similar quantities with like signs. So for case one, when we have similar quantities with like signs, and here's the rule written here in italics. The rule for finding the sum or find, finding the simplest expression of the sum is to add together the coefficients and remember the word coefficient just means factors add together the factors of the several quantities and to their sum prefix the common sign that means right before the number the common sign and then annex that means attach to and attach the common letter or letters. So 
This rule is very simple, and let's just look back to the examples and we can see it. First, add together the coefficients of the several quantities. Add together the coefficients. So we have the coefficients 3 and 4 make 7 and 5 make 12. So that's the first part. Add together the coefficients. Then, to their sum, so down here in the sum, to their sum, prefix the common sign. And so we would write, if we wanted to write the, the positive sign, we could put the plus sign just before the 1 here, just before the 12. So to their sum, prefix or set before it the common sign because in case 1, the quantities have the same sign or the common sign. And then annex the common letter or letters. That means set them after. And here we see the letter A written after the sum of the coefficients. So we, we can imagine that there's a positive sign here, then the sum of the coefficients, and then the common letter. That's what the rule tells us to do. And we can see the same here in this negative example. We're going to add together the three coefficients. So 3 and 4 make 7, and 5 make 12. That's the first part. Then, to their sum, prefix the common sign. And because the common sign is negative, we add those coefficients, we find the sum of them, and then we prefix the common sign, which is negative. And then we annex the common letter, which is A. So this rule here is the rule for how to add similar quantities with like signs. This is the rule for case 1 in addition in algebra. All right, so two important things to learn here in this article. First of all, the definition of addition in algebra in Article 53. And secondly, the rule for the first case of addition in algebra with these two examples of what that rule is referring to. So that should be clear for you now. There's a note here on the bottom of the page, which is important. This note tells us that when a quantity has no coefficient, so no numeral factor written before it, when a quantity has no coefficient, 1 is understood to be the coefficient. When a quantity has no coefficient written before it, 1 is understood to be the coefficient. And here we have an example. If we have the letter A, so we have a quantity with no coefficient before it, just the quantity represented by a letter in algebra. When a quantity has no coefficient before it, 1 is understood. So the quantity A is the same thing as 1 times A. A equals 1A. When a quantity has no coefficient, like a here, 1 is understood to be the coefficient of that quantity. Here you can see there are some helpful review questions that you should quiz yourself with to make sure you've followed the lesson carefully and understand what's going on. So question 53. What is algebraic addition, or what is, alge uh, what is addition in algebra? We learned that. We learned that addition in algebra is the process by which we seek to find the simplest expression of the sum of two or more quantities. So you should be able to answer that question. When quantities are similar and have the same sign, that means in case 1, when quantities are similar and they have the same sign, how are they added together? And the answer is the rule. They're added together by this rule. When several quantities, when several quantities are to be added together, is the result affected by the order in which they are taken? 
when several quantities are to be added together, is the result affected by the order in which they are taken? The answer is no. The order of numbers to be added does not affect the sum. So some review questions there at the bottom of Article 53. Now if we move on to the next page, you see you've got a bunch of examples to work on. Quite a bit, quite a number of examples. And then you see on the next page we move on to the next lesson, Article 54, where we study Case 2. So these exercises all relate to Case 1. Very simple because we have a rule for case one. So we're simply going to take this rule that we learn in Article 53 and we're going to come down to these exercises. Notice we start at number three because we already looked at two, e two examples. So this is the third example. And now we simply want to practice applying that rule step by step to find the sum which we see down here. And the textbook tells you the answers, so this really isn't a challenge to see if you can find the right answer. You're told what the answer is. The question is whether you can add these quantities and come to that true answer. That's the challenge for you. And, and you've got to be honest and work through these problems and see that you reach the correct answer. If you can't reach the correct answer, if you don't understand, then you should go back and review the lesson. And if you're really stuck on something, as you probably will be at some point in algebra, uh, when you find yourself stuck, that's when you should contact uh, the Academy for help. You should post on the forum, ask for help, and uh, allow us to help you to, to get unstuck, as it were, and keep moving forward. So we want to put that rule to the test in these exercises. and. Uh, again, if we take, take this, this addition problem right here, 3a and 2a and a and 5a, we want to find the sum of these four quantities. And we were just given a rule to do that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the coefficients. We're going to add the coefficients. So we have 3 and 2 make 5. Now notice for the quantity a, there's no coefficient written, but we just learned in that note, we just learned that when a quantity has no coefficient, 1 is understood. So a is the same thing as 1a. So when we add 3 and 2, we get 5, and then we come to a, and we have to remember that there's as if there were a 1 in front of that a. So 3 and 2 make 5, and 1 makes 6, and 5 more make 11. The second step of the rule is to uh, prefix the common sign. These are all positive, so we don't actually put the sign there, but we understand that the plus or positive sign uh, stands before this sum. And then we annex the common letter. The common letter is A, and we annex that after the sum. And so you need to go through these exercises and do the same thing. Uh, and make sure that you can follow the rule, make sure you use the rule, practice the rule, and come to the right answer. The rules are meant to help you learn to solve these problems as easily as possible. You may be able to do it in your own way, but doing it in your own way might get you into trouble when the problems get a little more complicated. So it's always good to very carefully study and follow the rules because they will lead you safely, not just through a couple of examples in this lesson, but through all of your future lessons. So make sure you, you learn this rule carefully. And, and see if you can solve these other problems. Uh, these other examples, number four, number five, number six, and then down here you see it picks up at number seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and that's the end of Article 53. Notice the answers are given to each each problem, each example, so you should be able to reach this correct answer. And if you can't, try reviewing the problem and do it more carefully. Make sure you've written everything neatly and in an orderly way so you don't get yourself confused. 
And then if you still can't find, you can't reach the right answer, then you should get in touch and um, ask for some help, and we can try to find out what you're getting stuck on and how we can keep you moving forward. All right, so complete all these exercises on your own. You can do them. Um, I don't recommend for algebra that you type things because typing is going to get very complicated if you're working in algebra. I recommend you get a notebook and you do these exercises by hand. And if you um, have them written neatly, you can submit uh, a scanned copy of your written work for your assignment for the lesson. Let's just take a look at these notes that are included, all of this stuff here in between the exercises. Let's just read through this and make sure this is all clear. Um, what we're told is in the third example, so that would be this example right here. In the third example, suppose that A equals 2. If A equals 2, then 3A would be equal to 3 times 2. So if, if, a equals 2, and we have the quantity 3a. 3a is the same thing as 3 times a. So if the quantity a is known to be 2, then 3a is equal to 3 times a, and a equals 2, so 3a equals 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. So if we know that a equals 2, then this, the product would be 6. 2a would therefore be 2 times 2, which would make 4. And so we just have an example of plugging in um, a value for these, uh, for these letters and seeing what would come as a result of that addition. So we go through this. Um, suppose a equals 2, then 3a would equal 6. 2a would equal 4, a would equal 2 because it's simply 1 times 2, and then 5a would equal 5 times 2, which is 10. So we have these, we have these, uh, these sums. We have 6, 4, 2, and 10. And you can see that here they're added. 6 and 4 and 2 and 10 equal 22. So we find this sum by, by giving a value to a. However, the sum 22, even though we were able to find the true sum in this way, it can be more easily found with algebra by simply adding the coefficients and bringing down the sign and um, the common letter. So if we have 11a and we know that a equals 2, it's much easier just to say 11 times 2 equals 22. And so what we see here is that 11a is the sum of these quantities written in the simplest possible way. And that's the goal of addition in algebra. And so then we have another example. If we, f if we plug in 3 for x and 2 for y. So just replace the x's with 3's and the y's with 2's and multiply these things. So um, if x is 3, then we have 6 times x, which is 3, is 18, and y equals 2. So we would multiply 18 times 2, which makes 36, and it's negative. So we simply go through this problem plugging in these values that were given, or here, or down here, I'm sorry, plug in these values and then find the sum. And what this is showing us is you can solve this in a simple way like you would in arithmetic, but it's actually more complicated to do that than to learn to solve it using algebra, which you can see down here. Okay. So it's simply showing you why we're studying algebra and why addition in algebra is made much easier by the knowledge of algebra. So study this lesson and complete these exercises. See if you can reach these correct answers by following the rule very carefully, the rule for adding similar quantities with like signs, which is uh, case number one. 
make sure you can find all these right answers as you work uh, through these problems. And as long as you can come to these right answers, uh, you're doing well. What I don't want you to do is just try to try to sort of force yourself to come up with this answer. I want you just to take the problem, read the rule, use the rule to solve the problem, and then see if your result is the answer that's given here in the textbook. And if you can do that, then you can be sure that you understand the lesson. So get these exercises done. You can, you can type them if you want, or you can do them by hand. And no matter what you do, you should submit them so you get credit for that work. And we can put it on file for you, no matter how you do it. But I would like you to study this lesson, complete these exercises as neatly and completely as you can, and then submit them for review. And work through and study Article 53 in Algebra 1. And once you've got that done, we'll move on together to Article 54. So I hope that's a helpful walk through Article number 53. You've got to learn the definition of addition in algebra. And you've got to learn the rule for addition uh, for case 1, where we're adding similar quantities with like signs. Make sure you learn the definition of addition in algebra and the rule for case 1. Those are the two main points in this first lesson. So make sure you know them. And then solve all of these examples. Make sure that you can reach the correct answer. And if you can't, and you try again, and you still can't, that's when you should ask for some help and let us see what's going on. So try your best. And when you can't find the right answer, then learn to ask for help in a, in a quiet and uh, respectable way. Okay, so that's all for article number 53 in algebra. I hope that's a helpful walk through this lesson. Get this study done, get these examples done, get your assignment turned in, and we'll move on to article 54. I hope that's helpful. God bless your studies.